One of the biggest challenges when it comes to making videos is simply finding the time to do so. Well, I'm joined by Craig, and today we're gonna to share some of our favorite AI tools that have significantly sped up our workflow. Craig, I wanna talk about first planning and scripting the video, because I think mm -hmm. If you can get this right, you can seriously speed up your whole entire process. Absolutely, yep. And we all often preach here that the topic, you know, your idea, the big idea is one of your most important, if not the most important factor mm -hmm. in creating a successful video. And so this planning and scripting phase is huge. And we often use these AI tools to help us, you know, create better videos. Yeah, so let's talk about number one. Let's talk about Notebook LM, which, Essentially, the way I would explain this is ChatGPT, but you can train it on which data you want it. Mm -hmm. So for example, you can basically attach any link as a source, and then the AI is gonna use that based off whatever prompt you get it. So what kind of sources can you actually train Notebook LM on? Well, there's are uh, several different sources. We have Google Drive, Google Slides, links to websites, YouTube videos, or any like text you wanna prompt it in. Amazing. And then you can even upload PDF files yes. right into Notebook LM. And so the way I have used it is when I'm trying to research a product or maybe a video topic. So on one example, I was comparing the GoPro to the DJI. And typically the way I would go about this is I would watch several different YouTube videos, get all the spec sheets and order all the information in one mm -hmm. place. And so this is a great way to organize all those things. I could place a shopping b &H link and have all the specs data. I can upload different creators comparisons. And it's not for me to copy or steal, but just kind of get a pulse on yeah. what people have experienced. Mm -hmm. And that's basically the pro process I've always done before. It's just helping me do it a lot quicker. Mm -hmm. From there, you can ask Notebook LM basically any question yeah. like, What's the battery life difference? Uh, which one is better for this type of mm -hmm. a beginner? Which person would recommend the GoPro or pick up the Action 5 Pro? Mm -hmm. So I'm really just able to get really specific. Yeah. And I think what's the important thing to do is always fact check and Absolutely. make sure go back and mm -hmm. it's never to fully replace what I'm doing. I'm definitely going to add in my own thoughts into yeah. the video, but just to get a good outline of what I want to yeah. discuss, it's just a lot, it's just super helpful. It is kind of like a catch 22 where you're able to train it on your specific sources, which is such a cool thing. Right. And you can give it the inputs that you specifically are looking for it to be trained on. But then at the same time, you gotta hope and rely that the sources you're training the AI right. on are accurate for this kind of content planning. And this is a little bit step up above ChatGPT because if you just did the same thing in that, it, you don't know where the sources are coming from. It may lie to you about certain things or, pull from an older model so that data's not accurate. Inaccurate, yeah. So yeah, just give it, it gives you a nice outline to it go does. from and then also do your due diligence. Yeah, and so in a creative way I use this, which I found just absolutely fascinating was I actually did an entire audit of our course that we offer here at Think Media. If you don't know, we offer a course called Video Ranking Academy where we teach you how to rank your videos in YouTube search results and just create compelling content. So we have a course for this. And I actually went through literally our entire course library and I made notes about it and detailed, very detailed notes. This was 40, a 45 page PDF document yeah. that I created. And what I did is I actually trained Notebook LM on this PDF and I asked it to create me a podcast episode about my notes and it actually did this. And so this is one of the cool features. It can take resources and documents, convert it to an audio file and it's an AI generated podcast conversation. It was both a male and a female voice and they took my 40 page, 45 page document down into about a seven or eight minute podcast episode. So instead of somebody trying to sift through all of that content, they could listen and get the key points of my audit for our learning design, our course design team, and gather all of those thoughts based off of an audio file, which I just thought was one of the coolest examples of AI that I've seen in recent history. Yeah, I think it's super important in terms of communication and be able to understand what is process. But you provided 45 minutes of your own brain power, yeah. your thoughts, mm -hmm. and it was just able to condense that information, maybe summarize what I think yes. I, I read the 
the kind of the synopsis of yep. what each thing was so I could get a general overview of yeah. what things we would need to work on and then could always reference your article to go in even more exactly. granular. Yep, exactly. Wonderful. Well, our next tip is ChatGBT. This is a, like probably the most frequent AI tool I do use. Yeah. Everything from generating outlines, brainstorming content, even just improving the wording of my videos. Typically when I script out a video, I want to make sure my hook or the first 30 seconds of my video is really targeting the person I want to speak to. Yeah. What are their pain points? What things, what solutions are they looking for? And even like a little outline of the video yeah. in the hook. And so for ChatGPT, we've used it for that in terms of like an outline, like, okay, I know I want to cover this, this, and this. What's an organized flow that makes sense? And mm -hmm. then even more so, um, title ideas. If you have you know one title, but you want different versions, yeah. it can smartly, it, this actually has proved quite a bit from the early days where it was all very generic. These can give you very powerful keywords mm -hmm. in it using SEO. And I, so, and I personally yeah. noticed even with, broadly speaking, but specifically with titles as your example, that the more you use the software, yes. the better it is. And if you allow it to kind of train itself on your conversations and your memory, and you keep those conversations over on the left side, it can pull those conversations and use those um, mm -hmm. to formulate new responses. And so it's learning, like you, oftentimes we'll direct, like I actually like the titles or, or the ideas that you gave me in this direction. Mm -hmm. And then it can start learning that and those effects compound so that it's giving me better and better responses the more I use the software, which is just an encouragement to like, I know you and I, we're in the software every single day. We're using it to workshop ideas. Right. So use it as much as you can because it just keeps getting better and better. One powerful thing you told me about is making sure giving context to ChatGPT. So a lot of times people would just put in a one, two sentence prompt, hit go, and it'll get very generic, boring responses. But if you can even talk to it and give more detailed, yes. nuanced answer, uh, prompts, it's gonna help you, it's gonna give you a better answer. Yep. Yep, absolutely. I often actually have a microphone or a set of headphones that has a little microphone hooked up to my computer or my phone, and and I will enable like uh, voice dictation so it can mm -hmm. listen to me. And I will often like workshop really complex ideas where I give a lot of nuance and examples in my my prompting of the software rather than just when you type it's it's exhausting to type yeah. a thousand word prompt for an ai but it's a lot quicker to speak a thousand words maybe you talk for a couple minutes and you're able to get a really big nuanced prompt that's going to get you way better results ai is only going to get give you what you put into it and i think that's really important to remember and then for you in terms of your youtube approach how are you using this in your workflow I mean, on a day-to-day -day basis, um, what I've actually found for myself, what I like is I'll use it to workshop, you know, my scripts, my hooks, and then I'll get it to a point where, you know, based on my research and workshopping with AI, my scripting is, is in a good place. But then what I'll do is maybe I went a little bit too niche down with my idea. And mm -hmm. here at Think Media, we like to try to get things as broad appeal as possible. So what I'll do is I'll upload my script to chat GBT and I'll say, you know, I think this idea is a little bit too niche down and it might kind of hone us in on too small of an audience. Mm -hmm. What can we do? What kind of questions might we be able to build into the hook or throughout the video? We can add multiple pain points of different types of creators so we can broaden the appeal mm -hmm. for a wider audience. So that's just one use case. I mean, I use it all the time for different reasons, but um, yeah, that's one specific example. I love that. Definitely a great way to get the foundation Early on, planning, scripting, having a good idea is going to set up your whole video for success. Mm -hmm. Now we move into the, I would call it post-production, the editing side. This is another area where you spend a lot of time. It's very tedious. So any sort of editing tool I'm a big fan of. One of my favorites, and we said this multiple times on Think Media, is Gling.ai. What I love about this tool, basically, if you have a script, you do talking head videos, and you make lots of mistakes as I do plenty <laughs> I of times. Do too. All the time. 17 takes later, I finally get it right. Well, this tool will automatically cut out the bad takes, remove silences, even filler words like ums and buts, cuts those out and gives you a great rough cut of your video. From there, you could export it as an MP4 or even go into an editor like Premiere or DaVinci Resolve. And from there, I can even fine tune the edits, which I love the ability to have that flexibility 
change it out and get the time exactly where I want it. So super useful tool, yeah. if you, especially if you do YouTube content. I mean, it's just, it's so powerful. You can actually get started for free by clicking the link in the description down below. Again, if you haven't tried it already, I would highly recommend it. This is probably the one tool that I use on every video and legitimately saves me hours per video. And so another editing tool that we have found that leverages AI to speed up your workflow is Autopod. So this is gonna seamlessly sort of edit your podcast for you. You sort of give it inputs and camera feeds and you label and assign different speakers for your podcast, like Nate's mm -hmm. channel and Craig's channel. And then it's gonna automatically switch your podcast for you, saving you a ton of time. Have you used this software before a little bit? So this is super interesting and DaVinci Resolve just kind of got this feature, which I'll talk about later, is listening through, switching. Even if you did it in real time, if you have an hour long podcast, that's an hour of editing and maybe more. This can literally do it within minutes or seconds, cuts your podcast. And I would say it gives you a good rough cut and then you can go in and polish it to yep. your needs. And I always love a tool that allows me to be more creative. I don't want to do the tease. I want to be. I want to do the fun stuff. Yeah. And so both of these tools are really nail that. And then talking a little bit about DaVinci Resolve 20, they're just rolling this out. And what's cool about that is it actually cuts not only on the audio, but it visually sees who's talking and will cut to that. Yep. So even if you have mixed audio, and that means like your microphone audio and my microphone audio going to the same file, yeah, it will still work, which mm -hmm. is just huge. So I wonder, like I literally wonder if it's gonna get to the point where it can recognize like awkward behavior that's mm. happening in a scene because it's one thing to just edit based off the audio. It's another thing on visuals, but but it's a whole nother beast if AI can get it to the point where it can understand nuance. And if somebody's scratching their face, even if their audio is dialed and it selects the, rec the correct person, if they're scratching their face, they're in a weird, awkward position, maybe they leaned away from the microphone. Right. I'd be interested to see where AI goes. Um, for, can it get like that particular and that level of understanding? I'd be interested to see. Yeah, that's still where you have to mainly go in for now. Yes. But yeah, it would be really cool to see. Yeah, absolutely. Let's talk about the editing aspect, but in terms of repurposing your content. Maybe you have filmed a podcast, but now you want to be able to create a vertical short, share it to Instagram, TikTok, mm -hmm. YouTube shorts. We have a couple of different tools that essentially are very similar. You can pick which one you prefer. The first we have Opus Clip, which mm -hmm. we've used, we've done videos on. And I'll let you explain this one because I know you used it a lot more. Yeah, Opus Clip um, and our second tool even is, is Submagic. So these, we'll kind of pair these in the same category as content repurposing platforms, specifically de designated for the short, like vertical short form experience. Mm -hmm. So reposting these to YouTube shorts, Instagram reels, TikTok, Facebook reels, et cetera, all these vertical ways. And what's especially, you know, we're talking about podcasting, autopod, recutting podcasts. Well, what if you want to repurpose these for your social platforms? This is where these Opus Clip and Submagic come in. And so, so you can- So it'll take a 16 by nine podcast video. Yep. It'll make it vertical. It'll also add captions and even B-roll now yes. automatically. And we'll give you a nice 60 to maybe even longer short that can be easily shared. Exactly. That'll help you grow your audience and grow on these different platforms as well. Yep. So super cool. Great way to leverage your content you already have. Even mm -hmm. if you have libraries of content, you could easily use this tool and pick out a few ones that yeah. resonate and you can share with your audience. And typically the way it works is most of these short form repurposing, it works the same way. You grab, you can sometimes upload an actual video file, but the easier way is if you already have content that's on YouTube, just grab a YouTube link of that long form video, copy that into Opus or Submagic, and then it's gonna process the video for maybe 10 or 15 minutes. And that video could be as long as like one to two hours. And it's gonna take that file and generate like 15 to 20 different shorts out of that file in a matter of seconds after the video finishes processing. And typically I found that, you know, of 15 to 20 options, you're gonna get like four or five that are really good and then some that are a little bit worse, but it does all of the auto reframing for you. You can now go in, all of these softwares typically let you add custom B-roll now. That didn't used to be the case. You mm. used to have to just rely on whatever content was in the file itself, and then you could adjust some of the captioning. But now you can add some custom B-roll to elevate your content even That's more. Wonderful. And there's even ways where you could, if you want to, generate 
like dedicated shorts. So we could sit here with a vertical camera, record a dedicated short that's not a repurposed opportunity, it's actually a brand new piece of content, and then upload that short to Opus or Submagic to reduce your overall time. It's gonna do auto captions for you. You can add B-roll in a lot quicker ways than you would be able to opening up like a Premiere Pro or DaVinci editing software. So these are cool tools. Anything to save you time as a creator, I think is valuable because you can spend more time creating content, less time in post-production trying to manage files. So many great tools. And if you want to learn how to make YouTube videos even faster, there are several different tips that I've learned in the content creation process. If you wanna learn more about that, check out this video right here.